Hello. Hello everybody. everybody. Happy Friday morning. We're coming to you uh, early today because uh, I'm playing in a golf tournament. I even put on my golf shirt to and, make and you believe that, that I'm was nice. that participating was nice. in this. And a couple of clubs in the back seat. A couple of clubs mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, a couple of balls and maybe a tee rolling around in the passenger seat just in case a, a match breaks out on yeah. Johnson's Ferry. You ever play with a guy who likes to kick it around? <laughs> Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, but no, I'm looking forward to playing golf today. It's only supposed to be the hottest day of the year. Oh, see, there's always something with you. <laughs> you know, you have so much grandma in you. You really do. <laughs> speaking of grandpa, <laughs> speaking of grandpa, what? is I'm coming here, right? I'm making a right. And it couldn't have been him because they're in Miami. Yeah. Thought, uh, a guy in a white Chrysler LeBaron convertible, like 1988, making a left off the lower Roswell Road on the Johnson's Ferry. No, white curly hair blowing in the breeze. I thought it was Don Sutton. It might have been. I thought it was Don Sutton. It might have been. He's up here. Like Little River Band, you know, blasting out the window. Yeah, yeah. But they're in Miami. Yeah, it, it, was, so it wasn't Don Sutton. Couldn't have been. But you were talking about Grandma, so I wanted to be sure to mention. Well, I like the way your brain works. So I saw the other day during the Dodgers game, I'm watching on MLB no, uh, Network, and uh, Kershaw gets a strikeout, mm -hmm. and he moves into third place all time on the Dodgers strikeout list behind Don Drysdale and Don freaking Sutton. Who's one? Who's right? one? I couldn't believe I saw that the other well, day. He played forever. Yeah, but still, I couldn't believe it. You right. know, I, when the Dodgers would come to town, it was my favorite team. Thank you, to town. Um Because I would do a lot of interviews and, and stuff like that. I, you know, I had to fill five uh, commentaries every day on radio and TV. It's 25 a week. So you talk about Tell content. me, when you do doing all those, content. you recycle a few. Like you could do one in New York and then maybe write it in Atlanta. Never Back did. then, nobody would know. Never did. Never did. That, that's enough to drive a man crazy. Right. It explains a lot. Yeah, it really did. And... 22 years. You want to do the math? I'll do the math. You know, now what I get, like I do one commentary a night. Yeah. By the way, I thoroughly enjoy those. And, and by the way, they look great. The new design. Yeah. The, the font is yeah. bigger. I think right. Junji, who is a... Uh, right. kid we found on a bus uh, running away. Well, we heard about he him. He's going to Key West. He really made a name for himself at the uh, Tibetan Freedom Festival a few mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. Junji is a, is a marketing media guru, mm -hmm. if you will. I'm yeah. going to track him right. down. And right. apparently we've got Eddie Murphy coming on the show uh, once he's in town. He's got so many connections. You know, he's like kind of like a shaman to the stars. You know, so it was, it was very good. Um, Dave yeah. Armwood says hello, by the way. Hey, Davey. Davey boy. How are you? Good to see you. Thanks for Thank checking you, Gigi. in. Gigi, yeah. really, I see that he's going to be a hell of a producer in this industry. Think of all the great ones that we've he had. He really is. Think about the great ones yeah. we've had. Yeah. Anthony Holliday, the X-Man mm -hmm. in Boston, who's a watcher, by the way. Mm -hmm. What's up, X-Man? X. A uh, big game, Glenn E. Warren. Big game's what looking in? Big game, Glenn E. Warren. Another one. Uh, <clears throat> Malcolm Brown. Mal? I mean, we've had some wonderful producers. Wow, Mal was one of my favorite producers. Edward. Yeah. Mal. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, Sasquatch who was a producer. Orrin Romaine. Mm -hmm. He's still doing it. God bless him. Saw Orrin not too long mm -hmm. ago. Oh, some of those I mean, some of those producers we made went on to uh, incredible so, stardom. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but the uh, phone is ringing off the hook. You want to right. answer the phone? Right. What? Hey, Seacrest, <laughs> pick that up, all right? You're not going to go anywhere. Boy, he, you know, talk about a guy that had no potential, and all of a sudden you start working with him, right? I, I was the one that got fit in that tiny little tuxedo. It is a tiny little tuxedo. Yeah. You ever seen him now that he's all grown up? He's it's the cute. same size. It's cute. He's the same size. I've never seen Ryan in person. He's a good guy? I don't know. Um, I do know that he played for the uh, Dunwoody Colts. Right, um, which is like a Pop Warner football team. It's a feeder for Marist and Dunwoody High School. Oh, good. That's yeah, yeah, good yeah. To know. Well, no, but they've re and he played at Dunwoody High School, I think. But anyway, they've reached out to him several times for uh, come back, just something, something yeah, whatever, whatever. whatever, and he's never responded. So, I mean, he is kind of big time, and I would think that Pop Warner football maybe just kind of a check or something. You know? All of a sudden, they come out with gold helmets. 
helmets. And I don't mean like gold helmets like Georgia Tech. I mean dipped in gold yeah. helmets. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Money. I love that. You know, so something like they look like they just ran out of the Vatican. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So much Speaking gold. of money, did you check out Arthur's uh, boys last night? I can't do it. I can't watch this season. Um, it, it, it was horrible. It was a horrible experience. I saw we lost again. We've yeah. lost 10 in a row. Yeah. This is I bad, right? right? No, it's right. 10. 10? Yeah. You, know, you know what it is when um, winning is winning. Winning begets winning. You, if, you, you've got to win some of these preseason games or you just can't turn it on. Right. That's how it is. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's like <clears throat> we came out of the Super Bowl with the best team in football. Oh, here we go. That is no, 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 no. I'm just saying. Next year, go into the preseason and don't win a game. You've got to win a game almost by accident. Right. It's the following year, which was last season, we go in and we're winless in the preseason and we underachieved all year long. Now, we haven't done anything to change that this year. In fact, we're giving anybody who doesn't want to come to camp, that's fine. We're going to do contract with you. But, you know, I'm, all, I'm exaggerating. But, you know, it's like, it's like such a... Uh, Lucy goosey affair. But is he in a mindset where it becomes contagious to a point where you get at that point of the game and you're like, we don't we don't need to exactly. dig it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. We lose, we lose. It's okay. I mean, exactly. It's hard to switch yeah, on and no, off, right? Exactly. That's something, uh, for instance, that's a nuance that Arthur will, will never understand. Or not even understand, but be aware of or, or, or even occur to him that there's a semblance of that type of factor, you know, could happen to his team. Man, they got to figure it out. I mean, yeah, no, I'm serious, though. I mean, when you're charging season ticket holders full price for those tickets, right? Like, they're charging, if your face value ticket's $158 for, you know, Bears, Cowboys, if it's Bears and Buccaneers in the preseason, they're charging the same amount. That's crap. These guys aren't even in the league. These guys would be freaking doing shows with us in no well, time. Then, By the way, do you find anybody in the locker room that's got potential maybe we could work with media-wise? Yeah. Uh, We're going to be on the streets here in a couple weeks. I, I wanted to get Coy Bacon because Coy will say anything we tell him to. Coy um, Bacon? Yeah. Uh, who did it last night? Coy Wire. Coy Wire. Wire Bacon. Just throw your noun in there. Whatever. I think I call him Coy Bacon in the commentary. Coy's a great guy, by the way. Uh, is he? Great guy. Yeah. Great guy. Yeah, he uh, he did the red zone with us several times. Well, you know, you, your idea of a great guy is different than my idea of a great guy. What do you What do you like? Well, I mean, you like guys that are like hail fellow well met. You know, <laughs> come in, you know, with, with you know, with all teeth and. Belts with I like whales teeth. on them I do like right. teeth. I know you like teeth. You like hair product. You like a guy who shaves his head right. uh, like Coy Bacon. And, and, and Give me a guy who's board. like Bo. Give you a guy who's like just a freaking wooly booger. Just came out from under a bridge somewhere. No. Now that's a guy no, that no. Mr. Bach can relate to. No, I relate to a guy's guy. The guy's guy. You could be a guy's a, a guy under man. a bridge. You know, you'd be like the toughest guy in the world when the time is you put a suit on, you go to work, you, you make tough decisions, you protect women and children, what? and um, you go to heaven. <laughs> you know, that's, so that's it. That's a life. That's that is a life. A life, life well led. You put on a suit, you make big decisions, you got a wife and kids, and then you die. That's it. You go off to glory. Oscar de la Renta. Are you wearing yeah. a suit in glory when you're up there with whatever? Among the clouds? Yeah. Oh, because there's got to yeah. be an outfit. Is this going to be yeah. your uh, eternal outfit? No. What are you in? Oh, I've, got, I've got white robes. <laughs> with stains on them. Oh, well, there's stains, <laughs> all right? But, you know, I've got Apostle uh, sandals. <laughs> and, and I'm looking good up there. Right. Well, I'm not, this could be an internal outfit for no. me because I could be looking for no. a golf match. No, it'd be like God would say to St. Peter. He says he's going to play golf again. <laughs> who, yeah. do, who, do they, who do they think he's fooling at this yeah. point? They like Pete. All right. So, you know what the interesting story to me was this week? Kelly Bryant, the former quarterback at Clemson, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Won a national championship with them. Mm -hmm. Last year, Trevor Lawrence comes in and he's just the real deal. 
right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. so, obviously, he takes over mm-hmm. after about four games. Mm-hmm. Kelly Bryant tucks his tail between his legs. And we don't know the behind the scenes and mm-hmm. all that, but he wanted to play football. So he left his teammates at Clemson, right? Mm-hmm. This is the way I see it. He goes, now he's signed with Missouri, he's going to be there. They should have a pretty good year. Kelly Bryant's a good mm-hmm. quarterback. Mm-hmm. Well, of course, Clemson goes on to win a national championship. Mm-hmm. The rest of the season, Kelly Bryant does not play after those first four games. And Dabo Sweeney elects not to give him a championship ring. Now, one other caveat to this story, and I'm watching the game against Syracuse, is Trevor Lawrence gets concussed, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. At that point, it would be Kelly Bryant's turn to come in and play the game. No, 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 no. They have to bring in their third string because Kelly Bryant has quit on his teammates, mm-hmm. and they barely eke out a victory. So I think that played part of it as well. Do you give Kelly Bryant a championship ring? No. I don't either. He wasn't on the team. He was on the team, and, and he was obviously a prick. <laughs> <laughs> about the way things came down. Hey, you lost your job fair and square. You know, now, like, you know, suck it up and go transfer if you want. Look at Stay Jalen Hurts. Want. Yeah. Jalen I mean, Hurts wrote it out, won in that, or played yeah. it. You saw what he did, yeah. right? So you just can't be bitter about it. <clears throat> because when you're bitter, it makes everything look bad. It looks as though you couldn't have competed anyway. Right. You know what I mean? It so, is bad. I agree. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it, it's a bitter pill to swallow, but we all have. At some point, you've got to suck it up. I will, and, and sometimes, you know, half the time, maybe you've accepted the uh, uh, result and move on. And the other half, you're bitter and crazy, you know, like me. Right. Uh, Both th- of There's those. a guy out there right now I want to strangle. Right. But, hey, you'd have to get in line. But, uh, you know what? If I get on that line. <laughs> you're throwing him out of the I'm, way. I'm getting to the front of that <laughs> line in about eight seconds. Well, good luck with that. You're welcome. But no, you're one of the few people that, when I heard this story, I'm like, good for Dabo. And so the fallout is, how is it going to affect him recruiting? Uh, you know, how's Florida State, how these other schools that recruit against Clemson, well, Alabama, Georgia, they'll, they'll use they'll that against Yeah, them. of course they will. But you know what? Uh, if anybody has any common sense, and you know, uh, uh, they realize that you know, he's doing the right thing. Right. Not, not Dabo is obviously... You know, he's got a tight squad. There's a lot of camaraderie on that team. Uh, uh, obviously, Dabo is the guy you want to play for. Right. And I think people realize that. And, and that's why I said, you know, uh, maybe Kelly Bryant's just like, at this point in his life, maybe he's a little prickly. Don't you? Don't you? You just hit it right on the head. I mean, there is obviously more to this. But don't you think that Dabo kind of got a feel from his players? Like whether or not yeah. they like the guy, yeah. and if it was oh. like, man, he screwed us. Good riddance. Yeah. Not no, give him a no, this ring. is a, this is definitely a team decision. You know, that's what I'm saying. They Indirectly, know. a team decision. Decision. Yeah, right. you know, he feeds off that. He he knows what's going the on. The essence. It's a head coach. You just crack the locker. You just head crack head. that door to the locker room. Drink oh my in. God, we got to stop feeding these guys this stuff. Drink it in. Right. Slam the door shut. And go to the trainer for some makeups. <laughs> did, you, yeah. did you see yeah, those yeah, LSU did. locker rooms with the sleep pods? No, I didn't. And all that? No. You know, it's just amazing to me. I got a friend of mine who's a professor at Georgia. He hasn't gotten a raise in 15 years, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And they, 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 they're running out of things to do with all this money I they're know. making. I like know. the toilet handles are made of gold mm-hmm. in these facilities. Mm-hmm. Where, where, where does it end? You, you know, I was, I was going to say. Uh, that every school tries to top the other. Sure, they got to spend the money, but they really do. It, it that's not just something you say. You try to top the other. No, they go like you said. You know, they, each kid could get his own uh, lavatory. For sure. Guys. I mean, they'll do anything. By the way, it's all recruiting and and what it looks like at first impression when a kid you know gets out of the cab. Right. Well, if you're ever in Athens and you got to go, right? There's always got to have places mm-hmm. to go. The Butts Mirrors facilities, mm-hmm. I'll put them up against anybody's. Mm-hmm. If you're stuck in a body, you got to go number, mm-hmm. you got to go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Go in the Butts Mirror. They'll take great care of you. They got that guy, uh, mm-hmm. Eves. Eves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they got Shaman on the rolls. <laughs> so it's, it's a, is it Eves or Jeeves? Uh, this is Eves. Oh, this is Eves. <laughs> Jeeves was his uncle. Right. Well, what about uh, the Cox kid? He ends up getting uh, 
thrown out of school. Not thrown out of school, but asked to leave the football program, the five-star linebacker. No, I know. Wonder what happened. I don't know. And forgive us for not knowing. Yeah. Um, if if it has been. That's why you come here. Right. But but no. In all seriousness, though, you look back at that recruiting class from a couple years ago, where you've got. You know this guy Cox, Some uh, highly rated athletes. Well, right, and then Five the quarterback uh, up at Ohio State now, mm -hmm. uh, and, and then also Luke Ford, the tight end. So mm -hmm. you're talking about oh, Georgia was the number one recruiting class. Couple those guys aren't even in Georgia. So recruit, you know what I'm saying? Like no, <laughs> no, I know. Well, what, seriously, what are you saying? Are you saying that? Uh, we just made such a big deal about that recruiting know, class, how they finally did no, and now you look back no, on but, it. No, you but know, the whole recruiting thing is ridiculous. It's absurd. I mean, the way people uh, go, no. oh, the Keller kid from Griffin is going to Georgia? What kid? <laughs> what kid from Griffin? Yeah, you know, I've never seen him play. I'll never see him play until he's probably a sophomore at Georgia. Right. Then ask me about him. Right. Well, what's everybody, what are you doing in North Georgia getting excited about a kid going to Georgia from Valdosta? Well, you said Griffin. No, now he's from Valdosta. Now, now he's, but that's not what North Georgia either. Are you one kid and hope to compete? No, you got to get him from everywhere. I got one from Valdosta, I got one from Griffin. A couple from Cleveland. Georgia. Yeah, they're soft. Those there's, Cleveland kids are soft. There's nothing to do up there. No, it's in the mountains. You know what they're up there? They're carrying hanging, trees and stuff. Hanging around Bill Elliott's pool room up mm -hmm. there. That's all there is to do. Right. Or uh, that's where they cabbage patch dolls. That's right, Eddie. Yeah. Man, I'm telling you what, Junji, you stick around this guy, you will learn, and you will learn. The next time you're in Cleveland, Georgia, what are you getting? Not even paying attention. Cleveland. Yeah. What are you yeah. getting? Yeah. Cabbage patch dolls. Yeah. yeah. Probably no, doesn't even know what they are. No, you, you, you're real good. Do you know what a cabbage patch doll is? Uh, he's got one in the car. Like, yeah, I'm going to play golf today. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hey, our folks at Low T Nation. By the way, I did take a supplement the other day. Um, I had some neck pain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so my uh, neighbor, who's this uh, big, huge, freaking meathead guy, power lifts and everything, great guy, he talks me into taking this Kratom powder, mm -hmm. which is like all the rage. It's from the Far East. They've been doing it for years. K-R-A-T-O-M. K-R-A-T-O-M. He had a bunch of them. He gave it to me. I said, how many do I take? He said, well, I take six, but I take a lot. Um, you know, for pain and stuff. He said, I take four. <clears throat> I took them. I felt like a million dollars. I swear to you, I've never, I felt for about 24 hours I was in and out taking this stuff for my right. neck. And by the time my neck stopped hurting, it got me through the pain. So mm -hmm. I've been a mess for two days. Since then? Since then. Can't sleep, bathroom issues, you name it, man. So stay away from the great empower. No matter how great they tell you it is, it's got side effects. As does everything. Well, you know what? There's, there you go right there. You don't get this. I mean, what do you get? I mean, freaking power. Honey. People out there honey, right now are you know, flushing it down the toilet. Thank you. You save yourself a lot of grief. I'll bring you some. You'll feel great. You'll love it. You can get chafed with that. There's nothing worse than like a bad chafe. You know, and I'm going to be playing golf today, so I'll have to, uh, mm -hmm. it's very hot, so I'll have to uh, powder up. You gonna do low T nation or Falcons really would tell me last night, weren't they? Yeah, low T nation. Everybody know low T nation. Guys, you know, for that get up and go, you know, you're feeling down in the dumps, you feel, you know, like have a lack of motivation. If you just you know you you're not having fun with the old wolf of the do lately, go to low T nation. One eight six six fix low T. You're gonna love it. Yeah, Andy Jordan wants to know, when did uh, Valdosta become North Georgia? It's a great question. I said, when you're in North Georgia, mm -hmm. what do you care about some kid oh. from Valdosta? Who's in North Georgia? You just generally speaking, for those in North Georgia. I, I would think maybe a guy who graduated in 53. Uh, so uh, we're talking about an old-timer, huh? Yeah, an old-timer, yeah. and then moved to North <clears throat> Georgia, and still gets excited about his dogs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And he'll come in and he'll tell everybody, to, your family, to put that corn down. I got something to tell you. Huh? We got the uh, Williamsworth kid from Valdosta. And the whole family, are you shitting me, Dad? <laughs> the peas go up in the air. 
you know, and like that's the type, that's bulldog. Hey, hey, listen, I mean, Andy, stuff going on, Andy, all right? has he has he painted a picture for you? Do you not understand exactly now what Mr. Bach is talking about? And don't waste our time anymore. No, please, please no. If, if you're, you're gonna, gonna chime in, break something. Thank you. It's like old times, right? You know, he shook my hand again the other day. What is with that? He, he, it's his, it's his power sign. You ever it's met somebody? His, it's he's gonna shake the hand until like you hit a knee. <laughs> it's a come. And, it's a and, and it gives him a feeling of superiority and power. And he's always like, "What? I'm not even doing anything." What? That's impossible. That's impossible. You're squeezing. <laughs> it's impossible. It's too much. It's entirely too much. So <laughs> why are you so hard on the fact? I mean, I didn't watch it. It was on the background. I literally could not keep my eyes open. Because it's when, just, I mean, it's just preseason football. This is yeah. God almighty, it's terrible. We have In no, Miami, nonetheless. No, we have no fiber. We have no heart and soul. We have no, um, you know, just no fire. You know what? I I, I hunkered down last night <laughs> with my, with my uh, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Forgive me. Forgive me, everybody. That was just building I didn't, I up. I never wanted to do that. That was building I, I, up. I really, I, even though Ron, you can do it. I never really wanted to do it. But when you got a dildo like this next <laughs> to you, all right, you, you lose all composure and all sense of decorum. All right, so you're on. But they're terrible. I, I, I'm sitting down here. <laughs> I, I've, got, I've got my, you know, my notebook, mm -hmm. and I take notes. I saw it. There was nothing to take a note about. There was nothing to take. I literally... We're going through the motions. Right. No gang tackling, no hustle, no intensity, uh, no, just no energy. What about Miami, though? I mean, did you see that from them, or is it just the preseason football? No, you know, Miami doesn't have So they're the same yeah, deal. Yeah. You know, the, but these are guys yeah, that are playing for their Miami. professional yeah. careers. Don't you think that they'd be flying around like the Chinese bandits? <laughs> You don't don't play golf. There. You're gonna hurt yourself. Seriously, you're gonna walk into somebody's back. Do, do, do you know about the Chinese bandits? Bo, that one, yeah, right. tell him. He, he, he he's, he's not too ready. young to know. He doesn't know. He's too cheap. How would he be able to put Chinese bandits, slobberknocker football together? You can't. You're right. Can. You're right. Let's move ahead. In five years, and. Um, there's just nothing. nothing but you say nothing, this every nothing. year about the preseason, and no, that we can't. No, we can't. You know what? You know what? If you're a football team, you win in the preseason. Let me ask you, you a question. You, you look like you want to win in the preseason. Um, Let me ask you a question. We have all the talent in the world. We're the best team in football. Can I ask you a question? And we can't. We how, just how, do have no feel, how do you feel about personal fitness and a head coach? In, in, in football or basketball, I'd say football. In football, do you feel the head coach should be fit if he's young? If he's not, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, like you could give me Schwarzenegger on the sideline, right? Or Bruce Arians. I'll take Arians. Okay. You know what I mean? I just feel like a guy who's a leader of men, who's in the element, he's with these guys. If it's not gonna. Go do a couple squats every oh, now yeah. and then, no, or maybe yeah. a, you know, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Like I don't understand right. some of these guys, yeah. like your Andy Reeds of the yeah. world, yeah. you know, Paul just, Johnson. I don't get it. Levy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like these some of these young coaches. They're freaking, you know, they're in shape. They work yeah, out yeah, with yeah. the guys. Well, it's, it's an part opportunity. Of I, I, you know, I'm. Um, I would love that too. I just see Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn looks like a beaten man. He's not the same person no, that came. Here. No, he does. He seems no. like he's a downtrodden beaten no, man. Because he had all, you know, he was so idealistic, and now you you realizing that you know idealism is great, but very often very far away from reality. Right. And his stuff isn't working. You know, and, he, and he's kind of lost the team. I think he saw himself as a leader, and you know, quite frankly, in, in fifteen and sixteen. We were more physical than we were in um, 17 last year and what we've shown so far this year. Does he have too much Mark Rick in him? That's what I'm kind of... I, 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 I wouldn't put him in the Mark Rick category. He's no. kind of goofy like that, yeah, right? Yeah, but, uh, but in a different vein, a different category. But like, all those guys... Like Mark was you know, torn between uh, uh, football field 
and spirituality. So, so when I think about younger guys that kind of relate to their team, you can see the, you know, you mm-hmm. can just see it. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Pete Carroll, you know, he's kind of the, right. the top. Right. Well, Nobody's really been able well, to do well, what he does. A lot of guys try to copy what he does, including Dan Quinn. Right. You know that. But you've got to be to, genuinely a, a, like a guy's guy, be, right? You, you, yeah. But you've got to be. If you're Pete Carroll, you got to be Pete Carroll. You know, if you're Dan Quinn, you've got to find something that that is totally uh, comfortable with you, that's relatable to the players. Right. Well, see, I think that's what the guy in Philly does well. I think the guy in Philly's a great coach. I don't. I don't I like have a him. feel for him yet. You know. I, well, I, I mean, you look at the play where Foles, right? In the no, Super I know. Bowl, I like Foles comes up and says, "That's running." He's like, "That's running." You know, oh, well, yeah, I love that. Love that. Love that. Love that. Yeah. Uh, the guy in uh, L.A. Uh, went to Marist. McVay. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. This is like a yeah. new, you know, generation of yeah. these guys. Yeah. I think that's going to be our next head coach because I think we're in agreement. This is not going to turn out well no. this year. You think McVay is? I would like to know. Uh, in fact, later today. Do you make plans for later in the day? Not often. Right. Probably not. Good idea. He only does it constriction. Takes <laughs> away so your creativity. And your ability to go. We well, don't want you to feel limited. And, and, and your ability to launch in right. different directions. Now you're taking the weight vest off. Yeah. But uh, I'm calling off this office this afternoon. Are you? Asking him to be with us. I mean, we want to talk to him. Can we do a podcast? We'll bring this down to uh, Arthur M. Blank uh, Foundation. Or family that place Foundation, is beautiful. Office. Speaking about golden toilet handles. Holy moly. I'd like to have Arthur come here, mix it up, maybe Bradley's, but then it would be like, uh, you know, coming to America. When he left, we'd have to clean up all the rose petals. I'm serious. I mean, why is nobody in town, newspaper, any, any, why is nobody talking to Arthur? Why is nobody asking Arthur? Because he either pays their salary or it's a Cox Media thing. And then he's obviously got his thumb on Cox. Yeah, that's the other thing about last night's game. It was disgusting. It was disgusting what they were doing in, in the broadcast booth. You know, hey, I talking saw, about how great we are. It's the same interview they've been doing for 10 years. It, we, we, you know what they're going to say before they say it. It was disgusting. These guys who have absolutely, you know what I'm saying to myself, Corey Wine is going for a retirement jersey in the Raptors. Well, he, he, he sees Warwick it. done. He sees Warwick done. And and he's one of Arthur's uh, you know, hand picked boys. Right. So um, he's got a chance to get up there in the rack to play Let me with ask us you a football. question. If Warwick Dunn didn't do anything in the community, let's say he was the other end of the spectrum. No, he, he was a John no, Abraham. He, he, he was at the Pink Pony. We wouldn't even remember him. Arthur wouldn't know his name at this point. Exactly. That's my point. All right. What I'm saying is that you know that's fine. I like Warwick Dunn. Put him on the other side. Maybe. Now don't put him up. Put a plaque in there. In the but you should have like a little building for the almosts, right? Like you should put... Well, Arthur could do that. I do respect the fact that the Braves, the Braves are extremely selective as far as who they put out there. <laughs> Baseball more so than other sports. Um, well, you, yeah, I see that's apparent because uh, uh, John Shaw holds a Bobby Cox in the Hall of Fame. Very, very... Uh, you know, but so Murphy's much. the only one that's retired that's not a Hall of Famer. That surprises me. But Murphy meant so much to the city at the time because mm-hmm. that's Murphy. all we had. It was Murph, yeah. Who was it the other day that was wearing the... Uh, it's one of the Hawks' new... Or, or, or one of the Braves' new signees that they just called up came into uh, the locker room wearing a Dominic Wilkins jersey. So nice. I, you know, I saw that and I didn't know who it was. Right. But see, that was nice. nice yeah, it was stuff. nice. Shows you thinking. How about Acuna? Is he going to go 40-40? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. And all his shit is to right center. Yeah. It's so effortless, you right. know? Yeah. No, he really is. Uh, you, know, you know what's scary about him? He's untapped. Right. Well, this is only a preview. And think about last year when he hurt his knee, and that looked so bad. Remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, 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 like, what if that didn't turn out the way it did? He turned, you know what I'm saying? Like, the development. You want? Should we do a little uh, general hospital parody here? Yeah, what do, do you want to do? Sure, I'll be Ronald. What did I say about that? Ah, say that one. Say no more about me. <laughs> no. <laughs> do you think he really speaks English? Of course. Of course he I does. I would never let on 
that I speak English <laughs> and actually have to talk to these people. I mean, Ichiro used an interpreter for 20 years. Right, right. How about Paul Bird at the Bureau? You know? Oh, my God, no. You know, here's the you thing. Know, you know, Bird tries hard. But he's no, just he's a goober. Too he's a goober. He's a goober. I know him a little bit. Yeah, I used to play good. basketball. He's a goober. Yeah. So, I'm sure he's a nice guy, but I mean, he's just a little like a goober. Well, they're all nice guys down there. They're just off. So here's, here's you know, the thing I was like, talking about like, with the retirement. It's like their own community. They're all saying now that, that McCann's number's got to be retired by the Braves. When he's, what? Because he's from here? Oh, my God. Right. If that happens, who, who's, who, who had a better career, Tim Hudson or Brian McCann? Because these are the same conversations. They, they had Joe Johnson. They had a typical, typical Joe Johnson. Career. Joe Johnson. What's Joe? Joe, take another shot and have a sandwich and go home. I think if they if they retired Joe's uh, number, I think that'd be the end of it for you. I think that'd be the day that the dean just rolled over. Yeah, it would be. That'd be. Yeah. But I don't think this group's gonna. You, know, you see Trey you know, Young that, left that, that, when, that happens, when that happens, this turns into a cooking show. Let me know. Oh, hey. Let me know. Hey. I got a I recipe know you've for got a calendar. Well, All this right? morning. Well, no, I could have done uh, lemon ricotta pancakes. Are you kidding me? I swear to God. With mimosas and some fresh fruit? You scare me. Oh, yeah. Now I see what Sarah sees in you. Right. Yeah. Imagine waking up to yeah. that every day. Yeah. yeah, you're a wonderful man. Who wouldn't want a part of that? Say, okay, honey, have a nice day. I'm going to play golf. Mm -hmm. I packed you a little lunch, sweetie. Pimento cheese. You no, we don't do mayonnaise. No, you don't do mayo? Don't do mayonnaise. Mayonnaise and olives. No? no. Nah, okay. All right. Well, I'm going to go. i got to go play golf. I have to get there. I have a tea time coming up here shortly. Yeah. No doubt. <laughs> well, it's been fun. Junji. Junji. I like that Junji doesn't show his face. They have no idea what no, he looks like. No, idea. That awful scar that he got. From the Wu Tang sword, yeah, Junji. No, he, he's got that. You know, got that going on too. You know, how about it? So it's not good. All right, we'll see everybody. <laughs>